as uh, Jay Haley noted, the modern or European concept of the unconscious mind came out of hypnotic experiments in the 19th century in uh, Vienna. When hypnotized people could not say why they did what they did, a concept was needed to explain these automatic act, uh, actions with suggestion, uh, the forgetfulness or amnesia of subjects, and so the concept of an unconscious mind, a thinking, intentional, and uh, memory able psychic organ was invented. It exists in other cultures too. Uh, Suzuki Roshi, the Zen master said that the concept of the unconscious mind in the West is the same as the concept of no mind in uh, Zen. Mm -hmm. Erickson's idea of utilization is very important for psychotherapy. What it amounts to is using all the expressions of the patient to help that person realize his own or her own goals in living. And to do it, not necessarily in a self-conscious way, but in a way that is unself-conscious or unconscious to the thoughtful person herself. Dr. Erickson's most brilliant student, Ernest Rossi, also a physician and a Jungian analyst, said about therapists, your job is to introduce the interplay between dreams and reality to your patient. Beautiful. So when you find yourself doing something useful, competent, that you did not sit down and plan out in the, the manner of people who lift heavy objects to rescue children stuck beneath them, without mm -hmm. ever having been in a gym in their lives, then you get the flavor of what uh, hypnotic psychotherapy that's influenced by Erickson's approaches uh, eventuates in. How it does it is very difficult to speak of, and if there's time, we can give it a try, but... Um, the experience of your unconscious mind being helpful can happen in actual nighttime dreams, daydreams, mental practice. A uh, patient of mine uh, was uh, blinded in her 20s uh, and had always been a brilliant athlete up to that time. She was a skier. And I worked with her for a decade or more. In her 30s, she decided to resume competitive skiing as a blind skier. Wow. And to do that, um, it's more complicated than, than regular competitive skiing at a high level because the blind skier, who can see only shadows, let's say, follows the sighted guide down these steep icy courses through the gates, slaloms, downhills, the works. And she came fifth in the world at the age of 35 in blind skiing. Uh -huh. So I asked her, uh, because we live in the Bay Area and it's four or five hours from the snow, she had a very full life, a good marriage, a business, many friends. I said, how do you practice? She said, I practice in my dreams. I make all the motions the race will require 
in my dreams and my body, my nervous system practices the motions as I sleep. Then when I wow. get to the slope, my body does what it's practiced. And there's, there's much uh, evidence of this from uh, experimentation with people playing the piano, yeah. playing on a paper uh, or imagining playing and sports as well. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? I'm sure that you found a lot of information in this very short video, you just so maybe like four or five, six minutes, however long it was. But that is not all. You can have access to the entire presentation of this amazing speaker, plus 40 more other presentations and speakers. And you can have access for life. You can have access to the video recording, to the audio recording, to the swipe files, to the transcripts, to all of the bonuses and the special gifts that all of the speakers and presenters and also the organizers are offering in the premium pass package. So if you like this, if you want more, make sure to sign up below for the premium pass and have lifetime access to everything. I'm sure it'll be one of the best investments you've ever made in your life, in yourself, in your practice, in your health, and also with working with clients. So go ahead, click on the button below, sign up for the premium pass, and we'll see you on the other side.